Welcome to our service of Compline from the Book of Common Prayer for the Deanery of Temiskaming in the first week of March. The service is found on page 722 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our song for tonight is found on page 410 in your Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 68, and we will say the whole psalm. I encourage you to say it with me. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Like as the smoke vanisheth, so shalt thou drive them away. And like as wax melteth at the fire, so let the ungodly perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. O oh, sing to the Lord and sing praises to his name. Magnify him that rideth upon the heavens. Praise him in his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. He is a father to the fatherless and defendeth the cause of widows. Even God in his holy habitation. He is the God that giveth the desolate a home to dwell in and bringeth the prisoners out of captivity. But the rebellious dwell in scarceness. O oh God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou wentest forth through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God. Sinai also quaked at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. Thou, O God, sentest a gracious rain upon thine inheritance and refreshest thou when it was empty. Thy congregation dwelt therein, for thou, O God, of thy goodness didst provide for the poor. The Lord gave the word, and great was the host of the women who published the tidings. Kings with their armies do flee, lo, they flee, and she that tarrieth at home divideth the spoil. Though ye may lie among the sheepfolds, the wings of a dove are covered with silver, and her pinions are yellow gold. When the Almighty scattereth the kings therein, her snow will bend snow fell upon salmon. The hill of Bashan is a mighty hill, even a high hill is the hill of Bashan. Why ye look why look ye askance, why ye high hills, at the hill which God hath desired for his abode? Yea, the Lord will abide in it forever. The chariots of God are ten thousands. Yea, even ten thousands upon thousands. And the Lord is among them, as in the holy place of Sinai. Thou art gone up on high. Thou hast left, led captivity captive and received gifts among men. Yea, even among the rebellious, that the Lord might dwell with them. Blessed be the Lord, who daily beareth our burden even the God who is our salvation. He is our God, even the God from whom cometh deliverance. And God is the Lord by whom we escape death. It is well seen, O God, how thou goest, how thou, my God and King, goest into the sanctuary. The singers go before, the minstrels follow after. In the midst are the damsels playing the timbrels. Bless ye God in the congregations, even the Lord, ye that are of the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their ruler, the princes of Judah and their company, the princes of Zebulon and the princes of Naphtali. O God, put forth thy strength, establish the thing, O God, that thou hast wrought for us. For the temple's sake at Jerusalem, king shall bring presents unto thee. Rebuke the wild beast of the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the people. Trampling underfoot the pieces of silver, 
Scatter thou the peoples that delight in war. Then shall the princes come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, O ye kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises unto the Lord. Who rideth in the high heavens, which are of old? Lo, he doth send out his voice, yea, and that a mighty voice. Ascribe ye the power to God. His majesty is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O God, terrible art thou in thy holy places, even the God of Israel. He giveth strength and power to his people. Blessed be God forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the two days were over, Jesus went from that place to Galilee. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. And when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my little boy dies. And Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. And the man believed the words that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. He asked them the hour when he began to recover, and they said to him, Yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. And the father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed, along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day, O Lord. That was a long psalm, wasn't it? But right in the middle was this little piece that struck me. Two lines. Blessed be the Lord who daily beareth our burden even the God who is our salvation. Blessed be the Lord who daily beareth our burden, even the God who is our salvation. And it struck me that it's rather difficult sometimes to move from the first line to the second. I don't find it difficult to believe that God cares what happens to us. I really do. He, we believe that he cares daily what happens to us. The psalmist is telling us that we are never out of his sight. We are never out of his care. But how do we move from that place to the place where we see God as the very, in the very core of our being as our salvation? The most important, most important value and core of our lives, the most important relationship. I think that the gospel tells us something about that because the word believe, like the word love, can have so many meanings. Think about it this way. Some years ago, we were lucky enough, fortunate enough to go to New Zealand. And before we went, I did all kinds of research. And I found out that in New Zealand, they drive on the opposite side of the road. I believed that. It was in my head. Intellectually, I believed that that was the case but it made absolutely no difference in my life until we arrived there and we looked at the motor home and realized that it, we were supposed to drive it on the opposite side of the road. Let me tell you, I let Rob drive. But what happened was that whenever we were walking in town on one of the sidewalks, I kept bumping into people. 
You see, I knew that everything was opposite there. And I believed it in my head, but I hadn't internalized it yet. I'd always walked on the right. Now I was supposed to walk on the left of the sidewalk. Inevitably, I ran smack dab into somebody. But what happened is after a period of time, when we'd been there a couple of weeks, that didn't happen anymore. I would run into somebody, I'd do a course correction, step over, step over, going the wrong way. After a while of acting on my intellectual belief, it became internalized enough that it became my default. So that when we came back to Canada for a little while, I was bumping into people on both sidewalks. That happened as we listen to our story today. You can just see this poor man. He's not even a Jewish person. He's a Gentile. But he has heard that Jesus speaks to Gentiles. In fact, Jesus has gone to a Gentile territory, up to Galilee. And his little boy is sick. And, you know, in the words that were attributed to um, Abraham in our reading last Sunday, he hoped against hope. He hoped when there was no hope that maybe this Jewish healer could heal his son. People had told him about it. He'd seen some things. He believed it. So he went and he spoke to Jesus and he begged for Jesus' help. What did he ask Jesus? Come, come with me. I can see him just wanting to grab his hand and drag him along. Jesus says to him, go, just go home. Your son is going to be fine. And on the strength of that, he is obedient. But clearly he doesn't believe it entirely because when his servants come running to him and tell him that his boy is fine, he's surprised. And he says, what time did it happen? And they say about one o'clock yesterday. And he says, well, that's the time I was talking to Jesus. As he begins to experience Jesus acting in his life, as he is obedient and does what Jesus has told him to do and then sees the results of his obedience, his belief becomes a core value for him so much so that he commits his life to the cause of Jesus Christ. He and his whole household make it known that Jesus has done this and he trusts Jesus. We are called to the same process. We know intellectually perhaps, except intellectually that Jesus is the son of God, our savior and our friend who cares for us. But it as, is as we live that out, it moves to the very core of our being, to the place where we can say, God is my salvation. God is my refuge. That was the point of the psalm going over the stories of where God had been in their lives as people of Israel, reminding them that you can trust this powerful and marvelous God who holds the universe together and still cares about an individual stuck in the middle of COVID alone in their living room today. And as we live that out, our belief moves from here to where it affects how we live and act and have our being. Amen. We continue in the Book of Common Prayer. Thou, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not, O Lord, our God. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. And to thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth, I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. And I will say, 
the Tenugus. Um, I will make you listen to me sing it. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that with thy wanted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasies. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye, and hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And on the same page we continue, and I encourage you to say with me the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of the people of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And say with me, please, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And as Christ our Savior taught us, we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord guard us and give us his blessing. Amen. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed through our own grievous fault. Wherefore, we pray God to have mercy upon us. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all of our sins, time and amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Most shape, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for the first, uh, second Sunday in Lent can be found on page 142.
my apologies, it's actually found on page 143. Almighty God, who sees that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer that is, uh, I think, probably one of the most appropriate for this COVID time. Be present, O merciful God, and perfect, protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances in this fleeting world may repose upon thy eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will lay us down in peace and take our rest, for it is thou, O Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with all our spirits. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us forever. Amen. Thank you for being with us this evening, and I encourage you to join us on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons or evenings, anytime after four o'clock. On Tuesdays of Lent, you will find the BCP Compline service, and on Thursdays, there will be an evening prayer. Please join us, and remember as well that Bishop Ann is offering a sunrise prayer at 7.15. If you're on Facebook, you can find her there. God bless you and keep you. Amen.